Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? I have a question. Um, when you imagine what the future will look like, what, what, what do you see? Do you imagine an apocalyptic world? Do you see a second great depression? What, what is it that you see? What is it that you are preparing for? Um, most people don't envision a positive future for humanity. And, you know, I think in part it's because we have movies, television shows, video games, talk shows, they're all filled with apocalyptic themes. And there is a constant speculation of what is ahead of us. Global events have really started to go haywire in the recent months, and faith in our leaders has never been lower. A lot of people are realizing that when things really start hitting a fan, nobody is going to come riding along on their big white horse and rescuing them, right? So sales of like emergency foods like August and Farms, Mountain House, and survival supplies have soared to record levels. And millions of us are planning for a life in a world that has gone completely and utterly mad. Like when you first started prepping, what was your reason? And has that reason now changed? Okay. I mean, even, even some of the most prominent voices in our society are openly talking about these things. For example, oh, you know who Joe Rogan is, the podcaster? He's even suggesting that right now would be a really good time for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come back. And I think it's a really great idea. Uh, there are millions of others out there that are feeling the exact same way. And at this point, even the wealthiest members of our society are pre preparing for the worst case scenarios. Because I, I mean, I even spoke about this in an earlier video. If everything is just going to be fine, then why are all of these billionaires and millionaires building massive survivalist compounds and underground bunkers? Can anyone answer that question out there? I mean, hello, McFly, what's the answer? <laughs> a very large portion of the general population is deeply concerned about what is coming as well. Billions of dollars is being spent on emergency food and supplies, and I fully expect that 2024 will shatter all previous records. I mean, we t thought 2023 was bad. <laughs> that was just the movie trailer, the 2024, you know? So, I mean, Americans really need to consider the vulnerability of the U.S. food supply and plan accordingly. No joke. I just think that a lot of people don't know where the food comes from. They don't understand the distribution system. And if they understood how it really works, that there's about two weeks worth of food in any distribution system around the United States. And once those, and I'm talking about the warehouses that fill the grocery stores, okay? Because as you know, that any grocery store only has three days worth of food, okay? So, and once those systems start to break down, the availability of food is going to drop to like zero, okay? And so what people think that they have in their cabinets or in their pantry that will help them survive is very different than actually sitting down, doing an analysis of caloric intake, which is the proper way to do inventory, by the way, for your family, what they need for not just survivability, but even thrive ability. All right. Because once our distribution system breaks down, once it breaks down, the stores will, will be completely empty. 
very, very fast. And there's no going to be, oh, shite. We might as well make a run for it and see what's left because there's not going to be anything left. There's not even going to be a breadcrumb. All right. And when that day arrives, because it will, you're going to be so glad that you took action ahead of time. You're going to be glad that I was making those videos that nobody wanted to watch of me canning those freaking uh, cheesesteaks in a jar. And you're going to be like, she taught me how to make a fucking cheesesteak. The cheesecake in a jar saved my flip flop in life. Now I won't have food fatigue. All right. The same thing could be said for those that have already chosen to relocate. If you feel like you and yours have to bug out, I'm going to stay here. I'm bugging in. I ain't going nowhere. Right on? I did not stockpile for me and mine. For me to just say, I, I'm a head out. No. Okay. Over the past few years, many Americans have actually moved to different parts of the country in anticipation of the very challenging times that are ahead of us. So if this is what you have in your brain, okay, like you're going to be like, you know what? I heard Wyoming is the place to be right now. There are some things that you might want to consider if you're thinking about making such a move. Mm -hmm. Low population density, distance to major minor cities, distance to military bases, distance to nuclear power plants, distance to interstate highways, low poverty rate, and low violent crime rate. And there are also some natural factors that you, can sh that you should consider to be important when evaluating your new location. Easy access to fresh water. Abundance of wall gain, low na natural disaster risk, dense forest cover, adequate uh, soil textures, um, adequate rainfall, low drought risk. And then, you know, when, when, when things start to get really crazy and you don't want to find yourself trapped in a heavily populated area because not for nothing, but social order is already breaking down all over the nation. And you know this, okay? So don't be like, how did I not know that? Well, you knew, okay? For example, did you know that 90,000 packages a day, whether it's Amazon, UPS, FedEx, USPS, they're stolen every single day in New York City. I was floored when I found this out. That means that there are 90,000 crimes in the Big Apple every single day. 90,000. Do these people not have a hobby? Or is this their hobby? And then they're just selling this stuff on Craigslist or Amazon or eBay or Facebook Marketplace or, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm being serious here. Okay, I'm not being, I'm not trying to act dumb or nothing. I'm, I'm being serious. All okay? right. I mean, our streets are literally teeming with the, the scariest of people. Many of them show absolutely no remorse for the crimes that they commit because they could care less because it's not their, theirs. They're not the one losing out on money. So what the hell do they care? I mean, when I was young, <laughs> I'm, I'm 48. All right. When I was young, I thought that living in the big city was the thing to do, all right? Remember, I'm, I'm originally from Atlantic City. Now I live in the suburbs of Tampa. Yay me. Okay? But now that I'm much older, I'm so glad that I do not live in one of those core urban areas because they have become extremely dangerous. Even though Tampa is literally like two seconds from me, it's still like, damn, that shit could trickle over here because I'm not too far <laughs> from Bush Gardens. You know what I'm saying? I mean, here's something for, okay. 
a wild mob of young people in San Francisco viciously vandalized a Waymo uh, uh, vehicle and set it on fire. It was a Waymo autonomous vehicle. Just, I feel like lighting a match today. I mean, do you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to cause such havoc that people are not going to know what to do with themselves? Where's your mother? Were you not raised correctly? Who taught you to do these things? Did you see a video on TikTok that showed you how to do this crap? I mean, I'm serious. And why? I mean, why did you why do you do these things? What did we lose all sense of communication here when you were told no is no and right is wrong right and wrong and I'm, 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 I'm asking, as a mom, what happened? Did you not have anyone to speak to as a child? I'll tell you why they did it. It's because they could. And they would, and they did. Okay, they couldn't care less about property rights. They just saw something that they could destroy and they did it. Hey! No! Smack you. Okay? Maybe that's the problem. You didn't know or experience discipline as a child. If this is how they're behaving now. What will they be like when there's no food in their stomachs and they haven't eaten for two weeks? Right? The more you know. I mean, the elite definitely want to avoid such confrontations, and so that is why they plan to bug out and go to the survivalist compounds that they have been constructing for themselves, 5,000 square feet underground bunkers with all of the luxuries of saunas and hot tubs and pools and tree houses and whatnot. Zuck. I mean, we really are on the verge of an extremely apocalyptic future here. And we will soon see things happen that many people never imagined could be possible in their lifetimes. Millions upon millions of people have a gut feeling. Do you ever get that feeling? And you're like, I could just feel it in my gut. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's there. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. And this gut feeling that really bad stuff is on the horizon. And it's not going to be too long before it becomes so clear as to why so many of us have been preparing. And yes, we wear our tinfoil hats and we wear them proudly because we're preparing for the worst, yet we're hoping for the best. Okay? I mean, just saying. Okay, so keep all of this information in the back of your brain and let it fester for just a moment. And hopefully it'll start to make sense to you, okay? All right, guys, I'm out of here. I will see you in the next one. You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping. And as always, fear less. Ciao.